Okay, Red Dead Redemption 2 running at 4K on my RX 6800 XT. We're currently bouncing between like 79 and 81 frames per second. It seems to be holding still now at 81. Game looks beautiful. The graphic settings are set very high, but not to the default ultra settings, because honestly those are kind of stupid in terms of the frame rate you get for the visual difference. This is tweaked version of the hardware unbox settings. I think I've turned up some lighting and things up uh, a little bit higher than what they did. But anyway, what I want to look at in this video isn't like tweak the graphics settings. It's compare the resolution scale uh, feature that's built into the advanced graphics settings down here with injecting FSR into the game via the lossless scaling app. Now I've covered this before in a previous video, so I don't want to dwell on it. But this is an app you can buy on Steam for $4.99, and basically it can inject FSR, since FSR is open source, into pretty much any window you want, including a game that's running in windowed mode. Um, the sharpness, you can set to zero for the sharpest setting, two for the least sharp setting, which seems weird. I'm leaving it in the middle at one. And you can run it a couple different ways, custom resolution scales, but you can also leave it on auto. And then you just turn down the render resolution in the game to do it. Now I'll show you that in a second, but what I actually want to do first is look at, well, what if we didn't bother with this thing? We didn't buy it. We didn't uh, even know it existed. What if we just used the in-game in resolution scaler? So I'm going to set it to 5 sixths or about 83%. This is going to be 1800p because 1800 is 5 sixths of 2160, which is your 4K resolution. So I'm going to apply this and let's look at, well, for one thing, how it looks, but also how it performs. So if we jump back to the same scene, notice that the frame rate is now 102 frames per second. That's quite a significant bump from the 81 we were at previously. Now, I have my nose stuck against a giant 4K OLED, and I'm not dealing with YouTube compression, so I can tell you that I can see a very slight fuzzing of some of the little details, although this still looks very good since 1800p is still very close to native 4K. Um, this is a resolution where it is pretty hard to see the difference. What we're gonna do now is turn it back up to normal, but uh, I mean, turn off this resolution scaler, but then we're going to try injecting FSR at a similar resolution. So what we're going to do now is adjust the game down to 1800p, which should be an equal resolution to what we were just doing on the resolution scaler, but running it in windowed mode, which is how this lossless scaling works. You leave it in windowed mode. Then you open up the app and you click that you want to scale it. So I'm going to scale it and I'm going to click on the game. You have to click on the game so it's in focus on the window you want to scale, and it's going to scale it up. Now, one downside to this over a native FSR implementation is that it's also scaling up the menus and certain effects like film grains and things like that, as far as I can tell. Whereas a native implementation of FSR wouldn't have to do it uh, that way. Uh, also, it has more overhead than a native FSR implementation, which is why if you look at our frame rate, we're actually at around 92. So remember we were at about 81 or 82 at native. We're at 91 or 92 here with FSR at 1800p, injected via lossless scaling, but we were all the way up to 102 on the uh, default in-engine resolution scaler. Now, image quality wise, I do feel like this looks a little bit better now, some people might say that's just due to the sharpening pass that happens as part of the FSR process, but whatever the reason, I do think this looks slightly better. I think it's slightly sharper in some of the distant details. Feel free to, you know, jump back and forth if you're on a 4K screen. Sorry, guys, I know you would probably like some zoom-ins and side-by-sides. I'm going to be honest here. I just don't have a whole heck of a lot of editing time right now. <laughs> I'm a busy guy. This is a hobby. Anyway... I think this will still be useful information for you. So what I want to do now is actually try something else. Let's actually try scaling from 1440p. So this should get us a better frame rate than the uh, other resolution scaling from, from 1800p that we were doing before. So let's scale it up again. Give it a second there.
Okay, I can definitely tell this looks worse than it did scaling from 1800p, but I can also see that we now have 120 frames per second, well, 119. But that's really nice for me because my 4K OLED I mentioned caps out at 120 frames per second. So um, this would be really cool in terms of, at least in this scene, maxing out my monitor. Um, but yeah, it definitely doesn't look as good as scaling up from 1800p. So honestly, I probably wouldn't actually use this setting since I don't really need to for that, that frame rate. But for image quality comparison wise, I think what would be interesting to compare now is actually, uh, let's, let's actually kill the lossless scaling for just a second and go back to uh, the in-game resolution scaler. And let's turn that one not to 1440p, but I'm going to attempt to match frame rates, or at least as close as we can. So a three, uh, a, uh, sorry, a two-thirds scale would be 1440p. Two-thirds of 2160 is uh, 1440. However, three-fourths is in between. Remember, uh, this was 1800p, right? Five, six. This is 1440p. I'm wondering, what if we scale from a three-fourths scaling? Which, uh, what would that be? Is that 1620, somewhere around there? I'm a math teacher, but that doesn't mean I can do all of these in my head. Okay, <laughs> anyway, let's see what it looks like. I think this will get us, yeah, this is getting us extremely similar frame rates to where we were at before. Apparently, we just jumped into cinematic mode because I didn't move my camera long enough. <laughs> but anyway, we're at about 114 frames per second, 113. Remember, we were around 119, 120 off of the 1440p upscale. Now, image quality-wise, this looks softer than the FSR scaling did uh, from 1440. Man, I, it's hard to say which one I would actually prefer. They definitely look slightly different. I think this one, to me, is more obviously upscaled. Whereas the FSR, I could tell there was a loss of detail, but due to the sharpening pass, I think it, maybe saying it looks more like native is wrong, but I, do, I didn't see as many of the little like, like the jaggies in his ears right now as I'm, as I'm kind of panning the camera. I don't know how much of that will pick up in the YouTube compression. Well, anyway, I've got to say that I, I wish the game had a native FSR implementation because that would have, I think, less overhead on it and would get us better performance and at higher uh, resolutions. But hopefully this was an interesting comparison video. So you can see that, well, I think FSR does a better job upscaling because of the overhead, especially injecting it in. You can use the internal rendering resolution at a higher resolution, which then maybe doesn't require as good of a uh, rendering resolution. Um, <laughs> I mean, a rendering upscaler. So the other thing I'll, I'll, I guess I'll just kind of finish on is that since the FSR injector from lossless scaling does break variable refresh rate, the fact that I can get something very comparable from the internal scaler means that I think I might reserve my use of that for games that just don't have any kind of very, well, very good internal scaler. I still think it's a really cool project, and especially if it's able to continue to reduce the overhead, which I think it has had updates that it's done uh, recently and is updated frequently to reduce overhead, and especially if it could, within the app itself, fix the variable refresh rate issues rather than requiring some kind of workaround using other programs, I think that would be huge. Also, just renumber your sharpness thing. The higher numbers should be sharper. Anyway, what do you guys all think? I hope you have an excellent day.